running yet, is it? Yeah, that's all right. All right, I've got 6.30 on the note. Just welcome, everybody. Meeting of the Beaver Creek City Schools Board of Education. Board. Today is May, November 2015. It is exactly 6.30 p.m. With that, Mrs. Rucker, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Lundy. Present. Mr. Nels. Here. Ms. Lund. Yes. Mr. Morrison. Here. Ms. Rodondo. Here. We have a quorum. Oh, very good. And if I could ask everybody to please stand and face our flag.
to whomever, so we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to the board. And I'll wrap it up by saying, Mr. Taylor, congratulations from all of us. Uh, and uh, just so that everybody does know, I did make a phone call to Greene County uh, Board of Elections this afternoon. Greene County is finished with what they're doing. Montgomery County has to finish what they're doing tomorrow. Talking to Robert Woods, who is the director um, or the chairman of the Board of Elections, uh, said he thinks with Montgomery County, it's going to be too close to call, which will then get forced to the state of Ohio, to the Secretary of State. Once it's there, it will probably be sometime the first week of December before we actually find out who of the two, Mrs. Arnold and Mr. Nels, will be our um, representative for the board. So just so that everybody knows, that's kind of where we stand. Uh, Mr. Morrison, you mentioned the Community and Stakeholder Survey, and hopefully everybody received their Creek Connections. That was one of the three ways we were trying to get this out to the community. Um, the, we, we had a little bit of a delay in the mailing of the Creek Connections. The last day, as was mentioned, was supposed to be tomorrow, or the 20th. Tomorrow, it would be tomorrow. Um, we have decided to keep it open until next Wednesday, the 24th, just to give those folks a little more time, assuming everybody's okay with letting that happen. How will the public know that it's us going to want to we'll, Facebook page? What we'll do, if it's okay with the board, we'll put it on Facebook page or have Ryan do that, and also then we'll put it on our web page. And I believe that I've also had the principals do another email class to their parents and say that we're just going to open as long as it's okay with the board. It was delayed about three days, and that would give us about you know, the three days additional time. Uh, I was in contact with the consultant today to see what her thoughts were, and she was fine with that as long as we were free to open it up for additional time. So right now, then it goes on Wednesday, the 24th, or 25th, 25th, 25th at uh, 4 o'clock. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes board member comments. We'll go to item six, board reports. There are two reports being given this evening. Item C and item G, item C, Performing Arts Council. Mrs. Regano, you're first, if you'll take the lead, please. Okay. <coughs> Cabaret Light, Mrs. Hunsett, was a great success. You know, it's always great when kids that I've had in my third grade class are up there performing and they're doing solos. And the wonderful thing about it was after the performance out in the lobby, there was a television and the performances were replayed for parents, you know, they want to buy a video, which was great. But the nice thing was, you heard teachers being praised for their work and creativity and putting these shows together. Kids praising each other and complimenting each other. They were saying, oh, look, there I am. Look, there you are. This was so great. We were so nervous, but look, we pulled it off. I mean, to see that, the camaraderie there with the parents and the teachers and the kids was just amazing. These shows are like Broadway productions. They really are. And you know, I was just so proud of crying there in the audience because, okay, they were my little babies in third grade and now they're in eighth grade and ninth grade. And before the performance, I was talking to some of them and one of the girls came up to me and said, oh, Mrs. Regano, I'm so nervous. She said, I'm in the front row and if I make a mistake, what's going to happen? I said to her, nobody's going to know because nobody knows what you're really supposed to be doing. So <laughs> you're going to be good. And she went, oh, I didn't think of that. I said, you're going to be fine. I said, nobody out here knows what it's supposed to be like. So you get up there and show them. So it was amazing. And if you get a chance, December 15th, it's their holiday concert. Starts at 6.30 at the high school. So please go out there and support these kids. I'm going to tell you these costumes. Changes, friends. I want to know how these girls, they walked off stage, and within 30 seconds, they were back on different costumes. And I asked them after the show, I had to find out some things. Nobody changes that fast. They said, our dresses are in a puddle in the back. We just jump out of one, jump into the other, like preschoolers, pull them up, and they're up on the stage. But they, nobody, and plus, they were told they had to practice at home. So they are at home, and they have to practice within so many seconds to get those dresses on. I said, I've just still been here now, it's a week later, trying to get the dress on. So, But if you get a chance, please go and support them, because they, as 
well as their teachers, are amazing people. Not to mention all the people in the community that support them. So please go and support them. They are fabulous kids. Okay. Next report will be Mr. Nettles, Green County Career Center, please. Well, I wanted to share a few things on the Career Center. Some of this may be redundant, it's been covered before, and I've made myself a few notes, but uh, we hired a new superintendent uh, last August, so it'll be August the 14th, and uh, uh, Dave Deskins uh, uh, decided to make some changes, and one of the things he did was he recognized that there was a pretty big gap in uh, aerospace and engineering careers in terms of preparation for that. Uh, so he did some data collection, and then in mid-September, uh, he went out and uh, met with some presidents of some of the various local community colleges and, and Bright State as well, um, and established some partnerships, which then was augmented by Beaver Creek uh, with, their, uh, with the STEM jet coming in with the 727. So things were really starting to come together. I thought I'd share with you now that those original partners, including Beaver Creek City Schools, um, have applied for a grant. The grant has been awarded, and this grant is more for a study to be conducted. It is not actually uh, for anything to be to physically be built. Uh, it was granted to the Green Tree Group here locally. They've done a great job so far um, uh, with what we've asked them to do and to submit recommendations on how we can do a better job as a county that includes all seven Green County school districts in order to have our students better prepared for careers in aerospace and engineering careers. Um, I think it's, a, it's another indication that the Career Center is certainly not my father's Career Center. It's a whole lot more than what we've ever seen. And uh, with that in mind, uh, we've been invited to hold our March 17th meeting uh, out there at the Career Center if the uh, board and uh, Dr. McLaughlin is in agreement, Ms. Rucker, uh, that it would be the Beaver Creek uh, School Board meeting out there and they would like to show us uh, some modernization that they've had, especially in the areas of the video production of the digital media labs. Uh, uh, Mr. Nelson, I'll follow up and take a look and see what the agenda is going to look like. Right now, I don't see anything that would uh, hinder us from having the uh, board meeting on the 17th at the Green County Career Center. We've done this in the past. Last year, for some reason, kind of slipped by that we did board one. I know they talked about maybe having it in the summer, and in the summer came, and we just didn't get that done. But the prior year, we had held a board meeting at the Green County Career Center. So I'll take the uh, typical agenda items for March, and if there's nothing outstanding, we'll get that posted and get things from what we have advertised uh, well in advance that the change would be uh, the board meeting at the Green County Career Center. Very good. I think the last time we did that, everybody was cut. Was, was it good? Okay. Dinner was great. I I didn't ask about that, but I'll check. Very good. That concludes uh, item six under board reports. We're now to item seven. Questions and or comments from the public. We can allow those from the public uh, to speak and give three minutes. And uh, today we only had one individual sign, uh, Mr. Gene Taylor. Uh, so, sir, if you will come up. Okay. Per usual, if you'll just state your name and your address, no. would you get up there? <laughs> Hello, I'm Gene Taylor, 1836 Andrea Circle, Beaver Creek, Ohio. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lundy, the board. Mr. McLaughlin and Mrs. Rucker uh, for uh, allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I want to express my gratitude to the voters of Beaver Creek School District uh, for giving me this opportunity to serve on the Beaver Creek Board of Education. Um, I've lived and worked in Beaver Creek since 1978 as both a teacher and a small business owner. And I believe I bring a unique set of skills uh, to the Beaver Creek Board. I'm looking forward to working with the superintendent, the treasurer, and the rest of my board members and to help make a great school system that I've loved from working at for the last 35 years uh, to help make it even a better one. So thank you very much. Thank you. We're now to item eight, approval of the meetings held. Okay. Minutes for October 2015 Board of Education meeting starts on page one, concludes on page 56. Well, I guess we have two meetings that we had in October.
October. We had our regular scheduled board meeting right here. And then on October 28th, we had a joint work session with the Beaver Creek um, City Council. So we had it at the City Council Chambers. So we need to approve the minutes for both of those. Sorry, Mr. Morrison. So we've got a motion. Do we have a second, please? Motion and a second. Uh, I guess no further discussion. I said all that I can't be said about that. Um, vote, please. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Ms. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Mr. Nels? Yes. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Very good. We're to now item nine, financial reports request. Uh, on item A, under nine, October 2015 financial reports. Beginning on page 58, we have a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. We have a motion to have a second. Mrs. Rucker, any discussion there? Um, I want to just go over very quickly. The, um, we have the two types of receipts that are on the uh, uh, top of the page there. The first is the local sources. That, that mainly comes from our real estate taxes and the um, rollback and homestead, which is the reimbursements from the state for um, some of those uh, real estate taxes as well. Between that first line and the well back and homestead, we are like within 0.59% of what our projections were on our revenues with those two lines. So we are in good standing with what our expectations for our taxes are to date. When it comes down to our foundation program, we are up about $600,000, $635,000 compared to what we have projected. And I think that at this point in time, we still are um, waiting for the state of Ohio to um, analyze our ADM, our student counts for the rest of the year. They're doing three um, rolling counts this year, not just like the first week of October like it used to be. So I think that that will get adjusted down as the year goes, but we're monitoring that. Then on the expenditures, which is the second half of the page, you will see the salaries and fringes. Um, we're in good standing with all of our lines of our expenditures. We are under budget by um, $600,000 in our expenditures to date. And again, that will ebb and flow depending on how people spend. But um, we're $1.1 million to the good because we're up in our revenue collections and down in our expenditures. So we are in good standing um, and we're in alignment with our five-year forecast at this point in time. Very good. Five, five, nine percent. I just said I'd like to thank Mr. Director for our thorough reports every month. They're phenomenal. Always like to hear that our revenues are <laughs> exceeding our expenditures. Uh, in fact, you come in all the time within 1%. Uh, that, that's pretty accurate. And when I look at our unencumbered fund balance, knowing that we're well over our 60 day carryover balance requirement, as is board required, that's always a nice position to be in. So thank you. At the, um, when we were at the MSPA conference, I saw one of my old board members from Columbus, and that was one of the first things he said to me is, Ms. Rucker, you are always within 2%. Within 2%. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. I'm like, you guys used to take me out for that. I'm just saying. <laughs> we are. I know. Okay. <laughs> I know. I can't believe it. Still big numbers. Two percent of millions of dollars is still a big number, I think. Huge. <laughs> Very good. And they're billions of dollars, but still. Very nice. Call for the vote, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nell? Yes. Mr. Gano? Yes. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Ms. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Very good. On item B in uh, section nine financial reports request, page seventy five, October two thousand fifteen, donated items. Motion to approve. So and a second. We have a motion and a second. Always nice to see all of these items that get donated monthly. That being said, call for vote, please. Ms. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Rano? Yes. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Mr. Nell? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Commissioner Carries? On to item C, uh, in section 9, financial reports request. We do have a resolution. So, Beaver Creek City Schools Board of Education, in the spirit of transparency, authorizes the treasurer to initiate and implement and participate in the Ohio Checkbooks Program. This is something we have been talking about and with this resolution and the pending vote we'll be able to move forward. So any further discussion? Oh, I guess we need a motion first. So I'll move in a second. Second. Any further discussion? We have been in uh, some talk 
talks with the Ohio Tech book folks. And in fact, today we had a webinar, um, and Zenia was on. Tracy talked about it, the, the treasurer of Rand Denny's uh, district. And then Pickerington, uh, Ryan was on with uh, Pickering and they were, Pickerington, they were showing their open checkbook and the drill down and all the features of it. So um, I must admit that I'm glad we weren't the first step out. I'm so, I mean, you know, I'm glad you guys worked all the problems out <laughs> for us. So now when we do go out, it'll be smooth, real smooth. <laughs> Very good. Talk it up, please. Mr. Nellis? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Ms. Hunt? Yes. Mr. Gano? Yes. Motion carries. Very good. On the item 10, new business A, employment, salary changes, leaves of absence, and terminations begin on page 76. Motion to approve, please. So moved. We've got a motion and a second, please. All second. I just, you just got one of the other. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, as you see, I uh, see Mr. Lundy a lot of these items are supplemental uh, positions for winter activities and also spring activities. The termination section does contain the termination of the purpose of uh, retirement of the superintendent. Uh, I've talked with you for several months now, I believe, uh, Mr. Lundy and Mr. Nels, we started talking about my transition to a grandfather's position about this time last year. Uh, my last day of employment for the district was July 31st of my uh, contract. It's been a pleasure to serve the district. Um, I think the district will receive a lot of qualified candidates for this position. I think you're in a good position to attract those candidates. Uh, I think we've moved the district forward in a lot of ways. Uh, I think you have an extremely strong cabinet uh, for sitting here tonight. I think you have an extremely strong administrative team. And under the guidance and direction of the Board of Education, I see continued great things for this district. And as I said, it's been a pleasure to serve this district in the capacity of a uh, superintendent, as I always end any public speaking engagement. I always say it's been an honor and privilege to serve this district as superintendent of schools. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Job well done. I would like to make a comment. Um, I, I want to talk about the first time I ever saw you and it was sitting at that table right there. And I used to think of you as the invisible man because I wasn't quite sure what you were doing, but you came in and, and you led a construction program that hands down was absolutely phenomenal. When you look at overall what occurred when you were the leader of that program and where our buildings are today, I have to tell you, I'm very impressed. You did an outstanding job. And then when you filled in and the transition uh, and filled that need as our superintendent. Um, Dr. McLaughlin, I just think you were the right guy at the right time. Uh, the leadership you've shown with this district, the, the accomplishments that we've had with students uh, working with uh, Ms. Rucker on our finances and where we've seen that get to, especially considering we had a bit of a treasure crisis in the middle of all of this. Um, it's, it's frankly very impressive and I personally want to thank you for all of your efforts and everything you've done. Thank you. And, and one thing is that uh, and I refer to myself, and, and I have no uh, motive to say this. I'm a cop horse, I'm not a show horse. I would just assume people say, who's the superintendent of the city of schools? And they say, I don't know, but man, they should go on to the school district. And we're a team. And the seven of us sitting up here, we're on the team. And Mr. Taylor will be a member of our team very soon. But we have a fantastic team of administrators sitting in this room, too. And any accomplishment that might be associated with this district could not have been done without their leadership and your guidance and leadership. Yeah. Thank you very much. All for the vote, please. Mr.
that change to occur second semester. Board policy already contains language that allows that has allowed us to do the BYOD before, but this is just uh, the step needed to put it in the handbook. So we're very excited about the opportunity. Yes. Mr. Lundy? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Motion carries. Right. Item 11, the superintendent's report. Uh, Mr. Lundy, I have just one item this, uh, this evening. Um, at your location, you'll find a yellow policy two or three times a year. Our consultants uh, get with us and get the board policy. It keeps us in line with state law, current court cases, and modifies our policy that we're in line with uh, state law. This is a living document. Sometimes you'll see the same policy two times in two years, but it changes as the law changes. This is the first reading. If you look at that, have any questions, please let me know. This has been uh, reviewed by our Noble consultant, their attorney, the administrative team, supervisor, coordinators, and uh, myself would be our recommendation for the single group group. Put us in line with the current case law. No, wait, no, 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 this is just for three months. Oh, first week, okay. Thank you. On to item uh, 12, announcements. Two announcements. Our next Board of Education meeting will be December the 17th, 2015. Um, and uh, right here at 6.30 p.m. And then our graduation ceremony, another center, May 28th, 9 a.m. We have a motion to adjourn, please. Motion and a second. Second. We are adjourned.